Welcome back, everyone, for week number six of, of summer reading. Um, last week we uh, finished First Thessalonians. We went through First Thessalonians chapter five, and you know we talked about putting Paul's final advice into practice. This week we are um, starting in Second Thessalonians, so we're finally moving on to the next chapter. And the thing to remember here is persistent encouragement is the prescription for persecution. So some of you guys might have noticed, um, you know, my hair's getting pretty long. I haven't had a haircut since the beginning of quarantine. And, you know, we're just going to let this thing grow. Might creep some people out, but <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, I have no idea what that has to do with this. I just thought it was funny um, to point out there. Um, we're going to go through the questions kind of like we did uh, last week, and I'm going to answer some of them for you, as well as read um, some of Second Thessalonians. Um, you know, it really stood out to me in the beginning of this chapter, um, verse number seven, and so that's where I'm going to jump into. And what that says in Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse seven, and God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted, and also for us when Lord Jesus appears from heaven, He will come with His mighty angels in flaming fire bringing judgment on those who do not know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus. So, so much of this summer, you know, I focused on, um, you know, different things like behavior and um, putting different things into practice. And I've kind of gotten away from just the good news, right? The gospel of Jesus. And and that's that Christ... Um, that God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you so that your sins are forgiven and that we're saved, right? That's the gospel. And, you know, when the first question says, what stood out to you in chapter one, uh, I wrote down, we always pray that our God will make you worthy of his calling, right? And, you know, it's just, it's just so interesting that, you know, we go through all this and we try to do all these different things and we try to do so many things on our own to change but all that really matters is the good news, which is that Christ died for us and that we're ready for when judgment day comes um, to go to heaven, right? And to be with God. And, and we want to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Um, the next question we're talking about says, look at verse three. What would a faith that's flourishing in this season look like? And so when I'm talking about the good news and talking about preaching the gospel and, and what that looks like, you know, the one person that stood out to me in this is, is Daryl. And you guys know him. He preaches on Sunday sometimes. He's the associate pastor at home church. And and one thing that, that I've noticed is that he never quits, right? And whether it's social media or in person or after maybe he's preached three times in a row in the span of 24 hours, he's still meeting with people, still loving on people, and still trying to show people who Jesus is. And, and he always points it back to Jesus, right? You can always go to Instagram and know that Daryl's going to have something good to say that day. And, you know, I'm thankful that we have a leader at our church that we can turn to and look like that, you know? Um, the next question was thinking about verse 4. Who is someone that's reminded or that's remained faithful in the midst of suffering? And how can you say that you're proud of them or that they've inspired you? And... You know, for me, I have um, friends that, you know, live all over the place. And there's one friend that comes to mind who I've just always seen stick it out. She's had so many things um, hit her <laughs> in her life. And again, just like Daryl, she's pointing things back to Jesus. She doesn't know what, why her circumstances are the way that they are. Maybe God isn't always going to change your circumstance, but he's going to change your perspective, hopefully. <laughs> That, that you understand that you're going through something um, for a reason and that he's going to pull you out of it. He's not going to let you sit there and suffer. He's always going to provide a way for you to come out of the temptation that we're falling into. And, you know, that's amazing to me to have friends in my life. And hopefully you guys have those people in your life too. And if you don't, then, you know, please reach out because we can find those people for you um, who are just going to continually pursue Jesus and, and push you that way. Um, even when things are tough. Um, you know, the next question talks about uh, who do you need to pray verse 11 over right now? And so, you know, let's jump into 9 through 11 now, which says, they will be punished with eternal destruction forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. 
When he comes on that day, he will receive glory from his holy people. Praise from all who believe. And this includes you, for you believed what we told you about him. So we keep on praying for you, asking God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your, pay, your faith prompts you to do. So I don't know how many times we talk about your purpose and, um, you know, why we're on this earth. But again, it's three things. To love God, to love others, and to tell other people about his love. And, you know, there are, yeah, there are people in my life that I need to pray that over. There are many people in that, in my life. And, you know, it's hard to just, I'm not going to just pick one, right? You know, I want, I want all the people in my life to be able to see that, to be able to flourish, to, to see the good things, um, that God has called them to do and to see them step into their calling. Right. And so hopefully you have people in your life that you can pray that over. And hopefully people are praying that over you so that you step into your calling. You know, it's a little different in, in middle school and high school to, to understand your purpose, to understand where you're going in life. You don't really know exactly what your career is. The next step is either high school or college. And, you know, maybe you just need to slow down and take it one step at a time, one day at a time, you know, just think, hey, my next step is high school. I'm going to spend my high school showing people who Jesus is and living a life for him because I don't know how much time I have. And, you know, when I pass away, and I know this is getting pretty deep, but I don't want people to remember me for, you know, being a person who likes sports or a person who did good things. I want people to remember me for showing people love and love through Jesus and what that looks like, right? And, you know, if you're in high school, you're going to college and you're trying to figure out where you're going. Maybe you're not going to college. Maybe you're just going to work or maybe you're trying to take a year off and find yourself. Well, I just encourage you to pursue Jesus and see what he has for you. Um, Sit and be still. (laughs) That for me, the biggest thing in my life was whenever I was able to sit back and, and just let him answer me, you know, because so many times I would ask God for something and instead of waiting for an answer, I just go do something myself. And I'm just trying to encourage you that he has a purpose for you and we should just take it a little bit at a time. Just love others, um, love yourself, and tell others about his love. Um, the next question we talk about is, do you feel discouraged right now? And who do you need to share that with? And how can you encourage yourself? So I would say, for me, I feel encouraged right now, which is the whole point of this message is persistent encouragement is the prescription for persecution. So when you feel like you're being attacked, encouraging, well, getting encouragement for others is is an easy way to feel a lot better, right? Um, You feel validated, you feel better when when other people are encouraging you, but how do you encourage yourself? And, And you know, one way is just to spend time seeing what God has for you, seeing why you're here and, you know, just being able to sit and and understand that he loves you, right? And so when you're going through the word, you can find so many verses and so many chapters in the Bible that are going to talk about you being worthy of his calling and, and understanding why you were created, that he created you in his image, meaning that (laughs) you're created in the image of God and you have this unique purpose as a Christian that not a lot of people have, you know? (laughs) And, you know, we were all created to worship God. All living things were created to worship God. And I want to leave you guys with this. Um, Verse number 12 at the end says, Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with him. This is all made possible because of the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So the way we live <laughs> impacts our eternity, right? And none of, none of the stuff on the earth is going to matter whenever you pass away. All that's going to matter is, did you, on Judgment Day, can you say to God that you served him, that you loved him, that you believed in the gospel and the good news? 
And, and I just want to encourage you guys with that this week that it's never too late, right? Um, you know, there were so many times when I was your age where I thought, oh yeah, well, I'll do that later. You know, I'll get to that later. Um, or God doesn't love me. You know, I've done too many things. Like, why would he want me to be a part of his plan, right? And, and like I've said so many times before that when we're distant from God, he just wants us to come back. And if we don't know God, he just wants a relationship with us. And, you know, he's not going to, um, he's not going to look down on you for that, right? He's not going, he's going to forgive all your sins. He's not going to look at your past and say, I don't want you. He's going to look at your past and say, I want to use that, right? And, and that's the hope that we can put in Jesus. Um, so if you guys will pray with me, we'll, um, we'll close today. Lord, we just thank you that um, we can put our hope in you. And we just ask that um, that you show, you know, all the people listening today that persistent encouragement is the prescription for um, for persecution. And, and that we can live in that and, and understand that there are ways that we can look to you to, to be encouraged, right? That we don't have to look to the world. And, and we can look to our leaders. Um, to encourage us as well. And Lord, we just thank you that we have that hope. We just thank you that we have your love. And we just ask that you just continue to pour that on us this week. In your name, amen. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in again. We got two weeks left. Um, I'm looking forward to these last couple weeks with you. If you have any questions or you want to reach out and, and you want to know more, um, you can always you know reach out on Instagram or you can find my information on the Home Church app. Thank you guys again. Have a great week.